Hello, my name is Marlene Garcia, and my study was about perceptions of individuals based on ableism. What is ableism? According to the American Psychology Association, ableism is a discrimination and prejudice towards people with disabilities. Why does it matter? Ableism affects individuals at every level of the socioeconomic status they live in when it occurs. A lot of early literature written by Greek and Romans actually consider the disabled to be inferior. Limited literature about how the development of ableism and perceptions formed has negatively impacted how the disabled are viewed now in today's society um, and how they are treated. Various research shows that physical appearance actually has a strong effect on how people are judged and perceived. Richardson conducted a series of studies that had children rank drawings from best to worst in which the drawings showed able-bodied kids to disabled kids. The study showed that children actually ranked the drawing based on physical appearance. So the more handicapped a child was in the drawing, the least liked the picture um, was. Research is generally done around ableism in the workplace and how it affects hiring those who are disabled. Park conducted a study with able-bodied um, and disabled students. They were given a list of 85 social desirable traits and undesirable traits. The study concluded that able-bodied students were actually perceived significantly different than those who were disabled. The students who were disabled were perceived as lazy, undesirable, and not very um, attractive versus able-bodied students who were perceived as more sociable, um, desirable, and more attractive. My study sought to collect data when it comes to impression formation and how able someone seemed based on physical appearance. I predicted that participants would rate the photo of a woman in a wheelchair as less likable or able than the photo of a woman in a regular chair. The total number of participants that were used in my study was 136. I used the UB psych um, student pool and different forms of social media to collect my data. For population, the gender, um, Men had 24.1%, women had 62.8%, non-binary third gender had 4.2%. For the ages, it ranged from 18 to 73 with the mean being 30. Uh, Ethnicity-wise, for white, it was 42.9%, Black and African American had 23%, Pacific Islander had 1.6%, Latinx had 17.3%, and prefer not to say had a 5.2%. I conducted an in-between subjects design to separate the participants into two groups. Uh, one viewed the photo of a woman in a wheelchair and then one viewed a photo of a woman in a regular chair. I also added in a manipulation question just to make sure that the participants were actually paid attention. So they were asked at the very end, was a woman in the photo in a wheelchair? And they had to answer yes or no. I created an anonymous service on Qualtrix um, to collect my data. My independent variable had two levels. One was being in a regular chair that had 75 people and one being in a wheelchair that had um, 75 people as well. The independent variable was whether or not the person in the photo would be perceived positively or negatively based on what chair they were sitting in. I used a tippy scale with 15 different variables um, to collect my data, but the five that I mainly focused on was capable, knowledgeable, receptive, strong, and self-reliant. I asked the participants to rate um, this person from one being not likely at all to nine being extremely likely based on the trait that they were given. The photo to the left is the one in the wheelchair and the photo to the right was the regular chair that was used in my survey. I conducted a series of independent sample tests um, to compare the means of the photo of the regular chair and the wheelchair. Ability was composited by combining the main five variables that I previously mentioned, which was self-reliant, strong, perceptive, knowledgeable, and capable. After, um, I actually removed the people who answered the manipulation question wrong. So I was able to um, fine tune my data more. My results showed that people in the wheelchair condition seem more able with a mean of 7.163 than the person in a regular chair um, with the mean being 
um, my, sig my sig value was 0.08, which is marginally significant. And I was actually surprised by these results. Because of the outcome, I conducted another independent sample test um, just to do some exploration to see if I chose other variables, if anything would change. Um, the variables I chose were uncreative, sympathetic, disorganized, open to experience, and dependable. The results showed that the only two that actually showed some form of significance was strong, um, with the SIG value being zero, the mean for the group of being in a wheelchair was 7.35 versus the mean of people not in a wheelchair was 5.9. So people actually thought that the person in a wheelchair seemed stronger than the person not in a wheelchair. And the other one was uncreative with the SIG value being 0 0.003. The mean of people or the fit photo in a wheelchair was 2.3. 75 versus the mean of the regular chair was 3.7. Um, so people thought that the person in the regular chair was more uncreative than the person in a wheelchair, which also surprised me. Um, both my SIG values were significant, like I previously mentioned. Based on previous literature, such as Gilman, um, about how the church would assume that people with disabilities either were possessed by evil spirits or lacked grace. I actually predicted that the photo with the person in a wheelchair was going to be perceived more negatively than the regular photo. A mixture of social attitudes and values that we carry as people have played a role in ambivalence toward the disabled. A study conducted by Rosen had students rate able-bodied people versus disabled in a romantic setting to see if implicit biases would affect the rating. The study concluded that the disabled person rated higher in romantic attraction than able body as well, which this also surprised me. My hypothesis was not confirmed. I believe that the limitation that occurred here is that I am actually handicapped myself and I collected data from people I know, such as friends, coworkers, um, and people on social media. So I believe that that significantly impacted my data. Um, Rosen, um, from the previous study that he conducted, it actually showed that people who have family members that are disabled rated those as more likable um, or romantically attracted than those people who did not have people who were disabled in their family. So I feel like the inconsistencies that occurred had a strong result because of social desirability bias and because they know me and they know that I don't fit, you know, the stereotype or standards of someone that is disabled. I feel like this unfortunately skewed my data a bit, but I could see that something was going on there. Um, I also believe that a lot of it contributed to women as well, because the majority of people in my study were women, um, and generally they rate other women um, nicer than men would, uh, which I believe would also have probably played a factor in why my data was actually not confirmed. I just want to thank Inspire's Discovery for letting me participate and shout out to Dr. Farley for being the best and helping with every step of the way. Thank you so much for letting me present and I hope you have a wonderful day.